Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. God said, Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. God tells you what you have done, that you have sinned arrogantly. God makes you listen to correction and commands you to repent of you being evil. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve me. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit to God, and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Therefore, say to the people, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Repent, turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. God said, Therefore, I will judge each of you according to your own ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent, turn from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. God said, Return to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. John the Baptist baptized with water for repentance. But after John the Baptist came, one who is more powerful than him, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, whose sandals John the Baptist was not worthy to carry, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The time has come, Jesus said, The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, I am a Christian who goes to church. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Jesus said, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Jesus said, In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus told them, This is what is written, The Messiah will suffer 
and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. You must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. You must repent and turn to God and demonstrate your repentance by your deeds. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. Repent of your impurity, sexual sin, and debauchery in which you have indulged. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. For we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. Knowing the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God's breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Since we have now been justified by blood of Jesus, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? Jesus said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. In fact, the law requires 
that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, and so He condemned sin in the flesh. In Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but He entered the most holy place once for all by His own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. We believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and live your life of sin. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed and a cursed brood. Jesus said, If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. And throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus said, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual imp morality, theft, false testimony, slander. Then Jesus said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Jesus said, Watch 
and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus said, In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will ever be ever seeing, but never perceiving. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. The death Jesus died he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God.